So I'm here with uh, with Dom Batts from Insomniac. How you guys doing? Um, I'm just asking some more, some questions about Resistance Three, uh, the multiplayer aspect of it. Um, what, what all has changed from from two to three? It's a very generic question. But. <laughs> well, uh, I would say three is a little more faster pace. Uh, it's you know you have more more going on. It's uh, smaller, more intimate, so you can really focus on. You know that one guy that really makes you angry on the other team. You know he kills you a lot. You want that. You want to kill that guy. You know that name. You see him. You know where to find him. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I like about the Switch is that it is more intimate. And, you know, your team is your team. It's not like in R2 how it was 60 players and you, for the most part, 55 of those other players you didn't really interact with. And this and this one, you know everybody you're playing with for the most part. Yeah. And that's you know, it's, it's good. It's a good thing. A good Switch in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, with with the guns, I noticed that the guns um, they have like some of them have scopes on it. What, can you customize your own guns in this? Uh, there's not in the way like uh, Modern Warfare does, like with their various scopes, scopes and, and, and grips and all that. The guns will, do have upgrades, um, and each gun has its own unique upgrades in itself. So in that case, yes, they're customizable, but in, it's not like full on crazy. Yeah, full on crazy customizable. Yeah. Um, is it every time you go into a game you um, upgrade your gun, or is it like an overall as you play online? It's an overall as you play. Overall as you play. Awesome. So how many players is it online then? Uh, so it'll be uh, eight versus eight. Eight so on sixteen eight. max. Okay. How many different modes are there? Um, right now, I think right now we're only showing TDM. I know we have the some other stuff in the works. Stuff? Cool. So can't we, really we got, talk about it. Can't or? really talk about it, but we do have some <laughs> stuff in, the, in you know getting worked on. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, you got a lot of hands on with it. What's your favorite part about the multiplayer in, in three? I'm, I like the uh, the kill streak awards a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and they're they're race specific. So each race, so the humans and Khmer have their own separate. Yeah. And they're very unique and they're very fun to use. Yeah. Like my favorite would, with the Khmer would be the cloak. Mm -hmm. get, you know, get invisible, get behind enemy lines, just you know, wreck face. Yeah. And then with the humans, the riot shield pops up in front of you, blocks. Mm -hmm. You know, just take a you know, become a bullet sponge basically. <laughs> yeah, bullet sponge. Which is fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, with the game, I mean, I, I see it running here, and I got to play it earlier. Uh, it, it runs much more smooth than I think the, uh, the other. I mean, Resistance 1 ran really well. I thought 2 mm -hmm. kind of had some issues with the controls, but this one, it seems like guys were really torqued yeah, down. Yeah, it really, it, it's really focused mm -hmm. in terms of the controls. Like, what you, it, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, hold square and then hit this button and it does this, you know. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of, like augmenting things. What the button does, what the button does. Yeah, it's like you guys really took some time to work on the controls as well because now you don't have to click R three to zoom in. You just hold L one. Exactly. Kind of like which with is what I like. Yeah, exactly. Now. And it makes it so much easier, you know, because it, it's difficult going from one game like um, playing, um, I don't know, Battlefield, uh, where you stab with R two and then it, to, then you go to like the kill zone or something like yeah, that. And yeah, yeah. It's a completely different I, function. I, it, it's, it's so rough. That's why I, do, I, I try not to play shooter like too many shooters at once, mm -hmm. just for that one reason. I mm -hmm. focus on one. Then once I'm done with that, I'll move on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I always like I like when controls are somewhat similar. That way you can, uh, that way you know you don't have you don't have to separate your mind mm -hmm. in terms of like what you're gonna do with this game and then you know, that crossover just confuses you and you, yeah. just, you get frustrated when it happens. And something I noticed about about the, the level that we're playing right here. What's the name of this level? This is the prison. The prison. Um, there's there's most of it's inside, but then there's parts where you can see the sunlight come in. Yeah. Um, are there a lot of levels where they're just inside, and then there's uh, the outside levels? Are they are they, are they spacious? Like. What they're, are the pretty spacious. Like? They're, they're, they're pretty spacious for uh, for the player count. Okay. You know, you're not stepping on top of you know other players' toes, which is, which is another great thing about it. Mm -hmm. um, you do have you know a lot of variance in um, in the way the environments are mm -hmm. inside you know inside gameplay, outside gameplay, things like that. Okay. So what are some of the differences? Because obviously, um, some games like when you play a single player and you switch to multiplayer, there, there's something you just can't do online. Like with the first or resistance, so you can slow down time when you're sniping. And oh, yeah. then online, obviously, you wouldn't um, be able to sell on everybody. Kind of I weird. want to say we, we're, we're trying to keep things pretty uh, along the same lines. It's so pretty even so how you play in single player is pretty much how you're going to play. So you can take all the, the experience you gain from single player and just go online with exactly. it. Exactly. Like the, what, the skills you gain in single player do carry over to multiplayer. Mm -hmm. So um, for the people who, I mean, I know a lot of people out there nowadays, they just go out and they buy a game and they just go play online and they haven't played the single player at all. Yeah. Um, what is single player, does it offer anything for the people who play online besides just the awesome storyline, the continuation? Yeah, there, there will be, you know, some, some online co-op, okay. things like that. It's, it's not like just a straight standalone, you're playing offline, 
Mm-hmm. Which is what, which is you know, I, I like that that you, there's some crossover in terms of that mm-hmm. because you know a lot of times you just skip over the single player. I just want multiplayer. Yeah. And then, but in this, at least you get to you know, if you want to play multiplayer with your friend mm-hmm. online. And some, sometimes that makes a game like um, Halo, for instance, is you know a very multiplayer game. Everybody talks about it. Everybody really hypes up a Halo. But um, I think what makes it so good is that you know it's four player online, you yeah. know offline co op and stuff exactly. like that. Is that some stuff that uh, Insomniac's been trying to work on getting into Resistance Three? Um, the offline stuff, the online, yeah, the online co op definitely. Offline, I'm not so sure. Okay. Um, but yeah. I mean, I want to expect you know you work on a multiplayer, yeah. so. I, I'm, I'm purely multiplayer. So a lot of single players, so I'm not exactly completely, you know, privy to. Or not, not even privy to, just knowledgeable about. Yeah. But if you if you head over to the, to the single player, there's another yeah. tester over there. He'll be able to help you. Out. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, this is Nick Keegan uh, from thegamefanatics.com. I'm hit, hit, talking with um, Marcus Smith, uh, creative director behind uh, Resistance Three. That's right. And um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, I got my hands on uh, Resistance Three just a second ago, playing yes, uh, the single player demo. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed a lot of things. Uh, the controls are, are very well tweaked down. Good. Uh, okay. I really, really like that. Good, uh, good. You changed a couple things, like from uh, uh, zooming in with R three to, to right. L one, and very making it uh, very well, Call of Duty styles, what people call it now. Sure, sure. Um, uh, do, do you think that will improve the the gameplay? Uh, that uh, st- as a step up from two. I think it changes the gameplay for sure. We're, we, uh, we're trying to consciously uh, improve how the resistance guns work rather than just go with what Call of Duty has. Um, you know, I, th- I think they've sort of set a standard in mm. first-person shooters in a yeah. lot of way. Uh, of course, their gameplay relies on it. If you're not zooming in, you're not doing very well in that game. Yeah. Um, in our game, we want to be able to allow people to shoot from the hip when they need to. Except for maybe the sniper rifle or you know scope <laughs> weapons, but uh, be a little ridiculous. Yeah. So and then and then the other thing we wanted to do is uh, we have all these exotic weapons, you know, Chimeran weapons, and so we wanted to say what what can, how can we make this gun different when you go into iron sights? Mm-hmm. And um, so we we devised a way of having these sort of holographic Chimeran iron sights, um, which in the demo that's there it's a little offset and it bothers me to no end so we're going to be fixing that because i think most people's eyes kind of go up top but yeah <laughs> that's my that's minor details that we'll we'll iron out as we go yeah. um so yeah I, I think i think uh making that more refined uh shooting control it has helped the game a lot yeah i thought so too when i was playing it it was like so easy i was like oh man this is really a lot of fun yeah, yeah, yeah. um the game game's more intense hey keep it down man <laughs> 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 no, um, as I played it, um, it's it's like when, you, when you're running or, or just the, the cinematics make the game seem uh, really puts you into the game. Yeah, cool. And I, I really like that. Appreciate um, it. Another thing, uh, talk about the, the first Resistance. I remember mm-hmm. um, playing that. And that's actually what got my dad into playing games. <laughs> okay, I, cool. Yeah, yeah he, he started playing. He's six years old. He just got into games. And so he loves Resistance French. That's great, yeah. Um, but, Did you guys um, play co-op? Yeah, well, that's, that's how I got him into it. Okay, you know? good, I was like, good, oh, good, I need someone to play with me. All right. And, so, and then we played two um, online co-op and stuff. And, okay. Um, I just got done talking to Don Bats about uh-huh. multiplayer. And, yeah, yeah. And he said to talk to, talk to someone about the single player, um, maybe the, the co-op in, in campaign mode. Is there mm-hmm. still co-op there? Or? Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're, we're actually, we're trying to f- make a more focused experience. It's hard to make a game in such a you know, rapid schedule. Uh, where we have what we did with R2, where we have a standalone cooperative, we have a standalone competitive, we have a standalone single player. Um, and I think ultimately most of us really like to play with friends and play mm-hmm. through the campaign. So yeah. we're, we're going back and uh, just doing that, sort of doing away with that co- the, the standalone co-op, mm-hmm. but integrating some of the elements of that, like the, the class progression and sort of adding a soft class level to our competitive. So hopefully people who are, who are into the uh, you know, cooperative mode that we had in R2, yeah. we'll still find uh, good things with our competitive, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so. Yeah. I also noticed a lot of, uh, the, <laughs> when I was playing the single player, yeah. the, um, the, there was a lot of uh, upgrading on guns. You, you yeah. shoot the gun, you get like two stars, you really right, feel right, like, right, you know, right. it's yeah, kind of yeah. like when you're playing online on Call of Duty and you see like the triple kill or something, right, like right, you right. see it come up on the screen, you get really excited. Uh, yeah. how, how much can you really like upgrade your guns? Is, is it like very broad or is it just kind of, um, well, right now, well, right now we're playing around with the big, the really big upgrades, and um, we're still t- trying to figure out if we're going to do sort of more smaller upgrades where it's more sort of stats buffs. Yeah. Uh, but for right now, each weapon has uh, two primary upgrades, and so the more you use it, it'll upgrade. Usually, it's an upgrade that uh, affects the primary fire, and then another one that upgrades the, the alt fire, and, and depending on which weapon comes first. Um, but that's the main thing is. Having having the, uh, the you know the gun have a really big noticeable effect. Yeah. Um, 
So who knows? Maybe by the time we come out, we'll have you know smaller incremental ones because it does feel good to be like, ah, I, I got something. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Cool. Really something gave something me to, something. Yeah, yeah, to go back and play it and just keep yeah leveling your guns it up and exactly. So we're we are cheating a little bit in this demo to speed that up, just mm -hmm. to give you guys a flavor of kind of how yeah. it's going to be. Um, I, I think if you're if you're getting that every five minutes or so, like you're getting yeah, a demo, it'd be, it'd be a little, little daunting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, free, free, free. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool though. I think the upgrades are adding a lot, and it's it kind of goes back to our Ratchet Two roots, where we had a uh, upgrade system based on using the weapons. And I know when I played that game, I was using all of the weapons because I wanted to upgrade all of them. I wanted to see what came next, and that was kind of the impetus for us doing it in, in R three as well. So uh, with the, with the upgrades, does it automatically upgrade while you're playing the game, or do you have to when you finish level go through and, and set the upgrades? We wanted to do it really immediate. Um, I think. The way Ratchet did it was we there would be a screen that would be like, hey, you upgraded and all that. Yeah. We, but Resistance is a lot more about immersion and being in the moment. Yeah, so everything. if you had a screen pop up, it would kind of It'd take it away. Break it away, it. yeah. And and likewise, if you if we just gave you points and said, oh, when when this level's done, remember to go back to the lobby and assign them or something, yeah. it, it gets a little daunting there too. Not to mention, we want you to be upgrading the weapons that you use a lot, so mm -hmm. that way you, you know what the, the functionality is and we're not springing something crazy on you. So we want it to be immediate. We want it to be happen like right as you're playing it, which is a little gamey on some regards, but I think uh, ultimately it feels better and kind of makes a better game. Yeah. So back to the co-op, um, just mainly, just you guys are working on just getting two players. Yeah, two player okay. co-op through the campaign. All right. Have you yeah. thought about maybe making more than that, or is that just a little too much? Uh, we thought about it. Uh, there's definitely been talk about maybe doing some sort of standalone mode for DLC or something, but that's still kind of on the on the whiteboard <laughs> more than a reality. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. It definitely takes a lot of resources to kind of dedicate. We don't want to put something out that's, that's yeah, half-assed. Definitely. So. And also, um, you said with, with the upgrading of guns and co-op, um, when you play co-op and you upgrade your gun, uh, and then you save it and you leave, and you come back at the time you, you go back, mm -hmm. um, do you have a, a character profile you have to upload? Um, kind of like a Borderlands type thing? Not really. I mean, well, in, in multiplayer, of course you will, so that when, wherever you're playing. In single player, uh, you'll have a save game, I believe if you're playing uh, in your profile, you'll have all the all the upgrades that you've you've acquired along the way. And so, just it acquires for both of you as you play co-op. Uh, let's see. How does that work? It works that if you have played through uh, a section that you have not played through in single player yet, mm -hmm. when you get to that point, I believe when you when you get that weapon, you'll be getting the upgrade mm -hmm. sort of uh, advance of where you would have been single player. Okay. Just straight through. So the demo that, that's that, that's here is that the one you guys are gonna probably gonna put up on the PlayStation Network? That's a good question. I don't know. I think I uh, that's more of a question for Ryan and James. Right okay. <laughs> they took off. Yeah. Can you um, hold just a second? Okay. <laughs> Red Bull and gum. Is <laughs> Red just, Bull and gum. I was trying to act casual, and just be like, oh, I'll take a sip. Of <laughs> 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 I don't blame you. It's okay. okay. Um, so at what point? Um, I remember when I was playing the demo, it's kind of like. Yeah. Um, Drop ships coming in, and it's not too much about the storyline. Uh, what point is this in the game? Is this midway, the beginning, or it's it's pretty much in the beginning. What? See you later. Oh, I'm sorry. Know, I'm recording you. <laughs> it's it's cool. out, Good so. to see you, Christian. Take care. Take care. Um, it is in the beginning. This is the first level. This is Haven, Oklahoma, where where Joseph Capelli uh, and his family have been hiding out from the Chimera and trying to squeak out an existence. And uh, this is at a point where the Chimera have found them. And now everything that uh, that Capelli knows and loves is in danger. So he's kind of having to revert to his old ways. Of, you know, it's like an old gunslinger story where yeah. you know you have to put up your killing ways, but somebody draw, br brings you back in. <laughs> um, so this is, I, I would say, it's probably about I don't know, 40 minutes to an hour into the campaign. So mm -hmm. we've kind of established the world, we've established where you're living at, and we're we're now sort of throwing you to the wolves at this point. How's the game start out? The, the the tutorial. Do you have to do you have to go through the tutorial or? Right now, we we are forcing people to go through the tutorial because uh, we were just talking about standardization of first person shooters. Yeah. We have a lot of standard buttons, but then we have the weird things, and the weird things for us are alt fires, in particular, alt fires that affect the primary fire. It's kind of a weird paradigm for people to get yeah. into, you know. Uh, and we found a direct correlation in fans of. People who love the game are the ones who got the alt fires and figured out how to use them. And the people who didn't just played through the you know resistance one with the carbine and had kind of a lackluster experience. Yeah. So we're saying, you know what? We're going to force you to go through the training. It's going to be a few minutes out of your life, but you're going to like the game a lot better. Yeah. So we're, we're tying it in with the story as, as much as humanly possible. 
Um, so that those beginning minutes of the game, they start out a lot slower than our previous Resistance games, but it establishes the world. It kind of puts you in in, in the environment, and sets a baseline for you know what this place is like before yeah. we you know pull the rug out. Yeah. <laughs> so this next question is the last question. Uh, you might not tell me the answer, but okay. Um, so a lot of the other is just like the first one was very left open, and so right. is this is this one going to be left open at the end, or is it uh, no spoilers, obviously? Or right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. How to, how to is it going to be like a, like an Inception ending or? We want to. We, well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, we, we definitely we want to close the door on a number of things. We don't want to leave people hanging completely, um, but we also want to prepare for advancing the story further later. Yeah. Um, so I, I said it somewhere before, but I, I think we're we're closing some doors, but we're not slamming them. Yeah. <laughs> So there we go. That's, that's my catchphrase. I'm going to get t-shirts printed up. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks, Marcus. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Sorry right. for spinning the uh, Red Bull on you. <laughs> that's all good. Look at it.